to discuss this visit in more detail, I'm now joined by Kato Yoshikazu. He's a research fellow at the Rakuten Securities Economic Research Institute in Tokyo. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. So Foreign Minister Hayashi's visit to China is the first time a top Japanese diplomat has been there in more than three years. Why now and what are your expectations for this visit? Sure. I think now um, for our foreign minister is visiting China, and it's a great, very, very important to stabilize the bilateral relationship. And in the short term, as uh, Beijing reporters described, our, our Japanese national uh, was detained in Beijing uh, 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 late last month. So I think our foreign minister try, is trying to push China to release uh, this Japanese national. But this is a short term. But in the long term, I think now Japan and China has been facing a lot of geopolitical issues, like the Russian-Ukraine war or, you know, South South and East China Sea issued. So we need to manage and you know, stabilize the bilateral relationship. In this sense, I think the top diplomacy is quite important. And uh, Hayashi is trying to set up a new uh, working relationship with Chinese uh, Foreign Minister Shingan. Mm. So a lot on the agenda. You mentioned those long-term issues there in the background, of course, China and Japan contending with those geopolitical challenges like the maritime concerns in the East and the South China Seas, the Taiwan Strait, all this against the backdrops of the Ukraine conflict. So how would you summarize the current state of bilateral relations between China and Japan and how important is the relationship? Of course, Japan and China, you know, are the very, you know, large economies in this region, and, you know, the second and third largest economy in the world. So, you know, uh, for Japan-China relationship, it's, it's quite important and consequential uh, to stabilize the regional stability. But I think now, uh, for Japan-China relationship, it is a lack of uh, independence and resilience because, you know, the bilateral relation is always undermined by, you know, other factors like U.S.-China relations or Russia-Ukraine war, you know. So I think now China and Japan should find out some discipline, its own discipline or principle to stabilize the bilateral relationship because it is important itself. Japan is among U.S. allies to follow Washington's lead in restricting exports of semiconductor materials to China. Is that strategy likely to continue, do you believe? Yeah, I would say, you know, for Japan's diplomacy, you know, we always prioritize the relation with the United States. It has not changed, you know, at all. Because, you know, for Japan's diplomacy, it is a top priority. So, you know, in including semiconductor and, you know, export control. But, you know, for Japan's economy, you know, the relationship and economic ties with China is relevant. So, particularly for, you know, our business cycle, you know, how to, you know, avoid you know, unnecessary, you know, conflicts with China. Uh, at, at the same time, prioritize our relations with the United States. So th we need to take you know, reasonable balance among diplomacy, economy, and business. So it is not easy. But for Hayashi, I hope he could uh, talk on this issue with uh, Chinese new, new foreign minister, Tsingang, because this is quite important for Japan's you know, long-term economic development. Well, we really appreciate your analysis today. Thank you very much indeed, Kato Yoshikatsu there from Tokyo.